चलिए दोस्तों शुरू करते हैं विदाउट वेस्टिंग ए टाइम इन टूडे वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द आई रिप एंड ई वी पी एन डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एल थ्री एनी का स्टेट पे एंड वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द हाउ वी कैन स्ट्रेस लेयर टू ट्रैफिक ओवर दिस लेयर थ्री इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर विद दी हेल्प ऑफ बी जी पी ई वी पी एन ओके सो यू मैं अबाउट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सेंट्रलाइज एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड राउटिंग सो इन द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड राउटिंग वट विल हैपन इज ऑल दी आर ऑन मैक एंट्री यू विल सी इन द लोकल लीफ और द लोकल पीज and uh, this is optimal you will get the optimal traffic flow between the east to west traffic from leaf 1 to leaf 3 to 2 1 to 1 this is the east to west traffic i'm talking about and vice versa and uh, if you want to do the scaling with respect to horizontal scaling in the data center that is uh, can be done we can add further more leaves here and in the case of centralized routing what happen is all the east west traffic need to pass through the gateway so let's suppose this is our centralized gateway so all traffic is going to leave one and leave two need to pass the gateway and all the centralized gateway only have to maintain the whole of the r and mac table of the data center and it's not easy to scale to communicate between the two different subnet or inter subnet you can say uh, we require a irip irip is the integrated routing in pgin and this has a two type asymmetric irip and symmetric irip in the asymmetric irip what happen is ingress p on ingress v tap uh, does the l3 and l2 lookup and egress uh, pe will do the l2 lookup only so let's suppose traffic is coming from here and uh, we have configured the asymmetric irip so this leaf as this is the ingress leaf and this is the ingress p so this will do the l3 and l2 lookup and this if this is the egress leaf, egress leaf this is where traffic is additionally located so this will do the l2 lookup only okay so in this case asymmetric irip egress subnet egress subnet must be local so we need to configure every subnet correct and the in ingress leaf have to maintain the r and mac table for each uh, every egress leaf the issue with the asymmetric is we can say this will increase the arp and cam table size and control plane issue will be seen and not able to scale okay while in the symmetric irip ingress and egress so this and this leaf and p will do the both thing they will go to the l2 lookup and l3 lookup and we need to configure the l3 vni uh needs to be configured all of the vtap on all of the p router and l2 vni only where the local border at this so this is how we stretch layer 2 uh, between the pe and leaf so let's assume we have already configured the ias as to get the reachability on the all of the leaves and spine and we have also configured the mppgp evpn l2 vpn evpn on this uh, leaf and spine okay so to stretch this layer 2 on this l3 infra so here i have configured the ce1 and ce2 interface ip address with the ip addresses interfaces as the ce2 is the dual dom so i want with the bundle ethernet 1 and on this bundle ethernet gigant 0/0 and 0/1 is the part on this bundle i configured the ip192.168.1.1/24 and this is the ce1 is the single dom is sensing on the interface itself i put the ip192.168.1.100 so both ip are part of the same subnet okay and after doing the c1 and c2 configuration i have done the configuration on the leaf side i have configured the evi 20 okay in this example we are going the evi 20 under the evpn context evi 20 bgp and route target value are defined 1.1 this value can be auto okay and we have put the command advertise mac okay once we done that after that i have done the configuration for the leaf 1 and leaf 2 for the layer 2 configuration As we have created the bundle one, so bundle one dot twenty layer two transfer system. We have put on leaf one and leaf two. On leaf three, it's in a single DOM, so only single interface. On this interface, only I can put the layer two transfer command. Once I done that, under the L two E VPN, I can put the bridge group and bridge domain. I can put the put the name BD twenty. Under that, I'm bridging the interfaces, physical interface. Here in the single DOM, gigabit zero slash zero one interface, you can see dot twenty and EVI twenty. and uh, on the leaf 1 and leaf 2 at this c2 is connected what we are doing we are bridging the bundle 1.20 with the evi okay so this is the one we required so you need to configure the isi segment routing or mpls for the encapsulation the data plane and l2 evp you need to configure after that with respect to evi 
so this is a configuration required with the help of this we can stretch this uh, layer 2 traffic over layer 3 infra and on the PE or on the leaf where this EVI will be configured on that PE only you will see the MAC IP routes so this helping with respect to scalability so EVP and a feature is the IRA which we discuss integrated routing in phishing so this feature allow us to communicate with each other across the subnet in the VPN so this is the config required so what we have done is first uh, let's suppose we have an already IGP ISS running and uh, L2 EVP address family is also configured, MPLS or segment routing is also configured, and we have an VPN V4 address family is also configured. So we have configured the VR blue on all of the leaf or P, leaf 3, leaf 2, leaf 1. Okay. And after that, on the CE1 and CE2 devices, I have uh, like within the previous. In the case of L2 stretch fabric, also we configure the interface IP addresses and now we configure the default route also because you want to communicate within this uh, 192.168.1.100 subnet to 193.168.1.100 so these two ip belong to different subnet you want to communicate between the each other so i configure the default route on the customer devices okay here on the c2 c2 is the dual on the leaf 2 and leaf 1 i have configured the next to by which 192.168.1.1 and on the PE1, so subnet is 193.168.1.1 is again. Okay. Here you can see that I have configured the layer 2 configuration on the leaf 1 and leaf 2. And here we are configuring the interface BVI. BVI 20 we are creating on the leaf 1 and leaf 2. And we are putting the IP address 192.168.1.1. This is the gateway for this CE2. Okay. This BVI acting as a tissue anycast gateway. So that's why we have configured the same IP and same MAC address on the leaf 1 and leaf 2. So on the leaf 1 also you will see the interface and this is a part of VRF blue. And this host routing command we are putting this command help to advertise the router 2 type. Route type 2 in the VPN and MAC address. This both IP and MAC will the same on the both leaf and leaf 2. Okay. For this subnet. So this is acting as a distributed anycast here. In the case of leaf 3, we are configuring the BVI 30 and that is also part of VRF blue and host routing is enabled and IP address and MAC is configured on that leaf. And after that, we are configuring on the leaf 1 and leaf 2, we are defined under the EV in context, we define the EVI 20 and in the leaf 3, we are defined the EVI 30. Once we have this uh, customer side interfaces and EVI in place, so we are bridging those interface on the L2 VPN. We are defined the bridge group 20 and bridge group 20 and the leaf 1 and 2. And bridging EVI interface bundle and routed interface BVI 20 we have just created. Similarly on the leaf 3 also, we are creating a bridge group 30, bridge room 30 and interface which is going to work the customer side. And EVI 30 and we are putting the routed interface BVI 30 to build. So in this video, we have covered the L2 VPN EVPN configuration with respect to service provider network with the MPLS encapsulation. In the upcoming video, we will cover the L2 VPN EVPN config with the VXLAN configuration in the Nexus. We will see how the config differ in the case of symmetric and symmetric IDB and asymmetric IDB and how we can configure L3 VNI, L2 VNI.